Hi everyone, this is Mae Vanders. We're here at Farpoint Con with author Timothy Zahn. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing very well. Thanks for having me on. Good. Now, let's get right into it. Uh, what did you think of the way Thrawn, your creation, was introduced into new canon in Rebels? Uh, I think they did a really good job. They understood Thrawn. They understood his how he handles tactical situations, how to write for him, and how to defeat him. So I thought Filoni really understood the character and got his uh, got writers for the episodes that understood him. So I was very pleased. Did they consult you when they were doing that? They told me they were going to bring be bringing Thrawn in, um, and they had me writing the prequel novel Thrawn. Um, because of that, they were feeding me scripts from season three and eventually then season four. Uh, the Thrawn-centric ones particularly, so that I would know what they were doing and I could put in foreshadowing or backstory into the novel that would lead into those things. But consulting, uh, they knew what they were doing. Most of the scripts were already done by the time I was brought into the picture. So um, they basically went on their own way. But again, they knew what they were doing. Right. And I know you said you didn't know they were going to be mentioning him in The Mandalorian. Have they spoken with you at all? Regarding using him now? No, they. I have made it clear on numerous occasions I'm available for consultation if they were ever interested. Uh, but at the moment, I'm getting crickets back from Lucasfilm on that, which is fine. I mean, it's their their production. Again, Filoni understands the character. I expect him to do a really good job. But yes, that was an unexpected thing. Surprise. Yeah. <laughs> um, there was a long stretch between the first time you wrote Thrawn in mm -hmm. Heir to the Empire and the new canon, yes. were the new books in line with what you had previously planned? Did you think about his origins at all before writing Heir to the Empire? Well, typically I fill in the map, only the parts of the map I need, yeah. uh, figuratively and literally. Uh, learned early on, if you have a map of a, an alien planet, and you expand it beyond what your story covers, you may suddenly discover, oh, this would be a great place for a volcano. Too bad I put a swamp there. Um, so I, I only fill in what I need. In Thrawn's case, I have no idea if I'm ever going to give an origin or ever going to talk about his earlier life. So I'm not going to spend any brain power on it. I've got mm -hmm. other projects to do. If and when I get asked to do something like that, it's easy enough to look at, okay, this is what I've set up. I've got a couple of pillars of, of the Chist Society I've mentioned. Okay, I can build off of those. Uh, but I don't usually spend the time to come up with something that I may never use. Yeah. I want to add, most of these are fan submitted questions. So oh, okay. You mm -hmm. see your question. <laughs> yeah. um, yes. Has your vision of him changed? I know he's more sympathetic in these books because we know more about him. Uh, no, I think he's the same character he always was uh, in the original trilogy. You're seeing him mostly from the point of view of his adversaries, Luke Han Leia. And therefore, of course, he's going to take on these sinister overtones of this is Palpatine, but more devious and even more clever. And, and we got to bring our A game to the field on this one. Uh, but even even there, you see things like conning the planet into lowering its... its um, the planetary defense shield by pretending or making them think you, I can shoot right through it. I'm not going to go and slaughter for no reason. I'm not. I'm going to res, uh, to uh, make things as simple and undamaging to people and property as I can. It boils down to, and, and you get this explicitly in the third book of the uh, Ascendancy trilogy, uh, lesser, lesser Evil. His entire motivation in the Empire and in, in the uh, Chiss Ascendancy is the protection and defense of the Ascendancy and the Chiss people. Everything flows from that. If he feels the Empire is the military machine he's going to need against threats that are coming toward his people, he will work with it. Uh, if he thinks doing this will protect the people, doing that will protect the people, that is what he is going to do. So if you, if you look at that as his motivation, I think he falls in line all through the stuff I've done. He follows that path. Yeah. Now like you said, obviously, his main goal is to protect his people. What yeah. do you think his best case scenario for them is? Like, what does he want 
for them other than keeping them safe? What's his... Ideally, defeat all enemies that come against us and let us live here in peace. That's, that's what most, I think, good leaders, that is their goal, peace for their people. Uh, for other less good people, it's take as much territory as possible. You see this all the way from, oh, I don't know, Genghis Khan, Napoleon, Hitler, Stalin, Emperor Palpatine, yeah. just absorb as much as possible. And that's ultimately self-defeating, I think. And I think Thrawn is smart enough to realize that. Just leave us alone and we'll be happy. Yes. Now, if you're familiar with the moral alignment chart for characters, mm -hmm. uh, where do you think Thrawn sits on it? I'm not familiar enough to be able to make a probably, I don't know, a good. There's a certain amount of chaos in the he will go against what is expected of him and what the rules state if he feels it's necessary. But mostly he'll stay within the, within the, the lines. You introduced a lot of characters in the Ascendancy mm -hmm. trilogy who yes. managed to survive. Yes. Um, do you have plans to use them in other stories? I have all sorts of plans, and at the moment, I'm not getting any feedback from Lucasfilm on what I can do next. I've got a couple of proposals sent out. I think I sent them out probably in November, maybe even October. And so far, and I, I expect a lot of that is story group is simply overwhelmed with all of the television stuff that's also being done. They've got to vet everything. And I've heard from my editor that some of the other novel projects that, that Del Rey has been working on have also run into roadblocks and such. So um, we will see what we come up with. Again, I've got proposals. I've got, I could pitch probably eight to 10 proposals right now to Lucasfilm. Uh, it when, when they get their schedule clear, I've got one that my editor is going to submit. When they get the, the story group gets its schedule clear, we'll see what they think about that. We'll see what else comes up. Ideally, someplace in the hopefully near future, Filoni will decide where Thrawn and Ezra emerge from that nine year gap. And once we've got that end point, hopefully I'll be able to do some fill in into that story because everybody wants that, including me. Uh, but until Filoni has his setup ready, I can't do anything right. with that. And of course, they're not gonna let me do anything with that. Yeah. So ultimately that's my goal to be able to do a novel or two or three or five or six mm -hmm. in that nine year gap. I, I've got ideas of what I wanna do. It'll depend on what Filoni wants, but whatever he wants, whatever, thoughts he has had about that gap, I can write stories to fill, fill that in. Mm. I'm very good at uh, bouncing ideas off other people and, and right. uh, filling, in, filling in their background material. Well, that answers someone else's question of when the Eli Banto trilogy is coming. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of the, I, I, will, I will mention one of the ideas I've had, which again, I will be willing to pitch, would be what I would call the donut Thrawn story. A, a Thrawn story without Thrawn. Mm. It would take place during the gap period, with Eli and, with uh, Ezra and Thrawn gone, mm. but it would have Aralani, uh, Eli Vanto, a bunch of the people we set up in uh, previous books. And we could all, my, my thought was, we pitched them a going against something, possibly winding up running against Snoke. Mm. One of my thoughts was the reason he's reusing the First Order is the force he'd intended to use got wiped out yeah. by Arlani and the Chiss with, with uh, Eli Vanto and such. So that is one of the ideas I would pitch. It doesn't have Thrawn in it, but it's got everybody else. Uh, but again, until Story Group is, comes up for air, uh, right. we can't pitch anything like this. But yeah, Eli would be a great character to, to do some novels off of. Uh, someone else wants to know, linguistically, how much of the Chiss language and dialect you've developed. I don't think you've ever heard any Chiss dialogue in these, except possibly some of the things, uh, probably in uh, Outbound Flight. Because in all of the Ascendancy novels and such, they're speaking tra trade languages, Psy Bisti, uh, and all the others. So when I'm getting a little bit of something in there, it's generally going to be a trade language, not, not uh, Xiong itself. So um, I've, again, I don't fill in anything I don't need to do. 
What I do when I'm doing a foreign language, one of these training languages, I will pull out one of my dictionaries, foreign dictionaries. I think it's, uh, I think Cybisti or the, the, the Chist trade languages, I think I'm using Zulu for that. What I will do is I'll look up the word I want, like uh, haven or port or something like that, find out that word, and then I'll shift all the vowels one. Mm. So it doesn't, you, you can't look it up on, on Google Translate, it's not a real world word, but because it's based on a real language, it has the flow of a real language. Mm. It feels like something people would actually yeah, speak. Keyboard it's, smash. Right, yeah, so I do that, uh, I've done Zulu, I say Finnish, usually pick one of the more limited uh, languages rather than something like Spanish or German that more people would recognize. Uh, but it then has the feel and flow of a language. Nice, that's a great writing tip no, too. It's, it, it's, it's easy enough to do with Google Translate. You can pull up, okay, what is Swahili uh, for this word? Or what is, uh, you know, some language is spoken Central Africa and most people wouldn't even recognize the name of in the Western world, let alone the words. But it's a great way to, again, come up with a new language that uh, feels accurate. Now, I know you said you didn't fill in things, but you do right. have some ideas. Yeah. Did you have more plans involving Nuso Esfa before New Canon happened? No, I mean, he's a, he's a good villain, but I think we've probably defeated him adequately, though those books really don't fit into canon as well as uh, the Thrawn trilogy will. Mm -hmm. I mean, Thrawn trilogy is, I think their official thing is, uh, history has a, about a one year gap, which that would fit into. And I don't think it's coincidental that The Mandalorian and all these other spinoffs are happening during that period, mm -hmm. uh, which means Filoni could run us to the edge of those books. He could run us right into the middle of them. He could maybe reference them vaguely. It's a big galaxy. Yeah. It doesn't, none of these, his stories have to have anything to do with those books, but you could do it without contradicting anything. So um, Filoni grew up with a lot of the expanded universe. That was part of his Star Wars experience. Uh, he has said that if you're looking for something, if let's check and see if something like that already exists. There's no point in making a new one if we've already got one in our archives for that. And uh, years ago, before the, the Disney purchase and everything, um, uh, Leland Shi once said, as, as being cautious about overrunning things and how the story group would work with a scalpel, not a machete, he said, everything in Star Wars is somebody's favorite. Yes. And we don't want to run that over if we don't have to for some other purpose. So between Story Group and Filoni, they're being cautious. They don't want to just ravage the whole expanded universe or the legends now, I guess. They will be cautious with it. They'll bring back things that work. And they've been doing that along. The Witches of Dathomir were uh, Dave Wolverton's uh, Courtship of Prince. Courtship of Princess Leia? I think that was Courtship of Princess yeah. Leia. Uh, they came in his book. The um, double-bladed lightsaber Darth Maul uses showed up in one of the, I think, of the Dark Empire comics first. So they have been picking and choosing. I mean, people say, oh, they're cherry picking. Well, you, you always want to pick the good stuff. That's what Marvel's been doing for years. They've been a very successful run of doing that. You know, okay, the, this storyline will mesh with this storyline, with this character. We can make a really good movie out of putting these things together. So there, there's nothing wrong with that. They've got the archives to, to build from. Filoni's quite a well, well aware of it. Um, watching the uh, Book of Boba Fett, a lot of, lot of it written by uh, uh, John Favreau, clearly he understands the tone of Star Wars as well. So I think, I think the TV shows are in good hands. We'll just see what happens with future movies and other things. And books too. And books. If you're if you're watching Story Group books. books. <laughs> now, are you working on any non-Star Wars projects right now or collaborations? We've just uh, David Weber and Tom Pope and I have just put out the fourth Manticore Ascendant book. And yes, that title came before Chiss Ascendancy. It's not my fault. It's not my fault. <laughs> um, the fourth book of that series, there are going to be six of those, has just been published, uh, a, a Call to Insurrection. We have two more books. We've got a basic outline we've agreed on, and Tom Pope 
who only does this in his spare time. He has a real world job that involves about 20 hours a day or so it seems. Um, he will be setting up the which section David and I do. And once he's got that organized and David and I have agreed, we'll go back to that. I've also got a semi new series. I'm picking up a, 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 a book I did back in, I think in 1999 called The Icarus Hunt. I've been waiting 20 years, come up with an idea for a sequel to that. Did that in uh, 2020 when everybody was locked down, wrote the book. It's coming out from Bain Books this July called The Icarus Plot. And I'm working on the third book of the series um, as well. And there is a, a series of stories and comics, graphic novels uh, called uh, Basil and Mobius coming out from Ryan Schifrin. I've been doing short stories for that. We've got the latest collection is up and running. I'm working on the third. We've got 10 stories. We've got three different authors working on them. I'm working on the uh, just finished the second of my three stories for that. It's, we're different authors, but it's going to be a continual story. So we're just doing each segment of that. So I've got, I've got work for a bit. Good, good. Well, we'll keep an eye out for those. Yeah. Where can people find you and uh, anything you want to say to your fans? Uh, thank you all for sticking with me for all of these years. I'm on Facebook, facebook.com slash Timothy Zahn. I don't often answer notes uh, just because there's too many. I don't have time, but I read everything that's posted there, messages, uh, posts of any sort. So uh, be assured I'm, I'm watching. I just, if I start answering everything, there will be no time to write books. And I think you'd probably rather have books. All righty. Okay. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you no problem. so much for watching. As thank always, you. have fun and follow your fandom. Hi, this is Timothy Zahn, author of Thrawn. You're watching Fandom Spotlight. Good for you.